today as our, our special guest. Kirk Story is, is coming to us from Gideon's International. Uh, he's also uh, a member of Greenview United Methodist Church, very integral part of the ministries uh, there at Greenview. So, Kirk, we welcome you. Please come and share as the word is before us. Thank you, brother. Appreciate you. Our scripture this morning is from Isaiah chapter 25, verse 11. So is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve, achieve the purpose for which I sent it. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Richard sat on his steel bunk bed in his jail cell, rolling another cigarette using a page torn from that little Bible that somebody had given him. Richard Taylor had grown up in South Wales in the British Isles. His father was an alcoholic and his parents divorced when he was 10 years old. He became involved with drugs and began stealing to support his drug habit, stealing first from his father, then from neighbors and local businesses. His teenage years were all about drugs and stealing. By the age of 21, he had been in and out of various juvenile centers and jails and now was serving his fourth jail term. As he finished smoking his cigarette and glanced through the bars of his cell, he began to reflect sadly on his life. Opening that little Bible to tear out another page and roll another cigarette, he began instead to read. The words just seemed to grab hold of me, Richard said in sharing his story. I couldn't stop reading for almost an hour. I'd never spent that much time reading anything. And I began to read more every day. And then I actually started attending the church services at the prison. And then one Sunday, the sermon about God's love and grace and forgiveness just brought me to my knees. That Sunday, I confessed my sinful nature and asked Jesus Christ to be my Lord and my Savior. And folks, we know what Jesus' answer was, don't we? And today, radically changed by the love of God and the words of God, Richard Taylor serves in a little town in Scotland as the pastor of their little church. Gideon's International is a non-denominational association of born-again Christian business and professional men dedicated to fulfilling God's great commission. In Matthew 28, the commissioned every one of us to go forth and spread the word of God. And as members of local churches, we go out and visit to share with you the wonderful stories of how God is working through Gideons around the world and through the Word of God. Since 1898, the Gideons have worked to fulfill God's great commandment, and today there are organized Gideon chapters in 200 countries, and Bibles are distributed in 102 languages. The promise of Isaiah 55, 11, that God's word will not return void is being fulfilled around the world as adults and teens and children in all countries around the world, those 200 countries come to, come to God as a result of his word, 
handed out in those little Bibles. Most of us know the focal point of the Gideon ministry, and it's the distribution of Bibles in hospitals, hotels, jails, prisons, colleges, universities, to our military, our police, our fire departments. Gideon's working in partnership with local churches because that's where the funds come from for these Bibles. Working in partnership with local churches have passed out and distributed over two billion copies of scripture since 1908. And our goal this year worldwide is to distribute 91 million copies of scripture. In the US, 12 million. And tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, to our military here and around the world, where our armed forces chaplains have an unlimited supply of Gideon Bibles for our military. God is good all the time. Amen? Amen. Doesn't it just amaze you the way God works in lives to change and to save lives? And such a work occurred in the life of a young man named Joseph Sharp in North Carolina. Joseph had grown up in a Christian home, attended college, but under the influence of uh, a liberal atmosphere there at the college, began to adopt that philosophy that's uh, too frequent today, that it's okay to believe whatever you want. And it doesn't take long when you start believing that way to uh, be headed down a very slippery slope. And Joseph started drinking, started doing drugs, ended up dropping out of college, and sliding even further down that slippery slope, added a life of crime to his self-serving life of thrills. A large drug dealer actually began using Joseph as one of his enforcers. Joseph stole and robbed, including stealing Gideon Bibles from every hotel or motel room where he stayed and then getting a good laugh of having them sitting on his bookshelf next to his books on the occult and witchcraft. But the thrills wore off and the fear set in. Fear of arrest and imprisonment, of death at the hands of other gang members carrying two guns at all times, even tying a gun to his hand while he slept. His life became a life of fear and terror, sickness and sorrow, shame. And he didn't see any way out to the point he was beginning to think about suicide. As Romans 6.23 says, the wages of sin is death, and Satan was leading Joseph right to death's door. Then one Sunday, he's out driving through Charlotte, North Carolina, hungover, feeling hopeless, totally helpless, when he stopped at a red light across from a church, which was just letting out. It was a beautiful spring day, fluffy white clouds in the sky, and just then the sun passed from behind one of those clouds and shone down on the faces of those churchgoers. And Joseph saw the joy and the love radiating from their faces. And he looked down on himself and just felt lost and ashamed. He went back to his apartment and took down one of those Gideon Bibles and started to read and there in his rundown apartment with beer and wine bottles scattered about drug paraphernalia on the coffee table, Joseph asked Jesus Christ to forgive him and save him. And today, Joseph is a committed Christian and he's a Gideon serving in Gaston, North Carolina to help others that are in need of God's changing, life-changing love, to help others as God and the Word of God 
helped him. And folks, think about the timing of all of that. That he happened to be out driving just at that time of morning. And the light turned red right when that church was letting out. And the sun came out and shone down on his churchgoers' faces right when he looked over. Coincidence? I don't think so. You know, I've found that what uh, non-believers call coincidence and good luck sure seems to happen a lot more when God is involved. God's Word is a wonderful gift, and it's so available to us. You all are probably like me. I don't know how many Bibles my wife and I have at home. So it's hard to believe that some folks are never exposed to the Word of God unless it's given to them. And even though Gideon's around the world, every four days distribute a million copies of Scripture, the need is still great around the world. And so today I ask for your help in two ways. First, your prayers. To add to your prayer list, Gideons around the world, especially those in countries where it is dangerous to distribute the Word of God. And your prayers to keep and to open doors for the distribution of God's Word, because so many have been closed to the distribution of God's Word. And finally, as always, for your financial gifts. Because as I shared with you, every one of those Bibles is a result of giving of local church members like yourselves. That's where those funds come from, for us to go out to exit nine and put Bibles in the bedside tables, to go to Princeton Community Hospital and make sure there's Bibles in every room and bedside table, every waiting room. You know, to stand and, and distribute little testaments to our college students at Bluefield State College and, and Concord University. Those are your dollars, folks, that are buying those testaments and those Bibles for Gideons to distribute. And I am glad to be here as one of our first uh, occasions to speak since COVID. We're just starting getting back and out in churches and speaking. And one reason I'm very glad to be here is we got the largest gift we have ever got on a Sunday from First United Methodist Church. Kind of blew us away. And we really need the help to get back and get, start getting out and, and distributing those Bibles. I imagine there's quite a few bedside tables that, you know, hope that folks that don't have a Bible take them with them. But that means we've got some bedside tables we need to fill up. And uh, so appreciate your support. Appreciate the chance to be here this morning and see old friends, uh, to share special music with you, and most of all, uh, to talk about and share the amazing ways that God's working through his word to save lives around the world. Amen? Amen. And thank you.